All right, so just like that, we came out here with the Zygo X6100 and we set up a NFED half wave that we got from Giga Parts for, I think it was like $55. Um, so yeah, not too bad. Uh, pretty impressive, the antenna. It, wire antennas are pretty good. I like them. Um, they are very efficient. However, setting them up can sometimes be a hassle. So my recommendation is bring some bungee cords. That way you can just, you have an insulator here, but you have these nice hooks that you can just hook onto your antenna, hook to whatever, even metal. Um, so yeah, so I just hooked up to that, ran my coax, which I think is like 8 foot or 10 foot to the radio. And then the wire itself, I believe, is about 50 feet maybe, if I'm not mistaken. And it's good for, um, I think it's like from 10 meters to 40 meters, um, something like that. You can check it out. It's on Giga Parts. Um, so yeah, so we sent out a message to KM4ACK, uh, we just wanted to send that message to him. We also actually received a message from a viewer that we were just trying to reply to. However, uh, right halfway through the message, the radio, the battery decided to die. I didn't charge the radio. It had been sitting on a shelf in my garage for a while there. Um, so I just grabbed it, brought it out here. I'm happy that we were able to send out one message. We'll make sure to go ahead and reply to that other viewer when we get a chance. Uh, but for now, I think we're gonna go ahead and pack everything up. Everything fits nicely into this little uh, pelican type case and that fits into my backpack so that includes the radio the microsoft surface go tablet um, the antenna the coax everything fits into one box 
the only thing I haven't added in there yet is a battery for situations like this, an external battery that is, and a small solar panel. So that'll probably come next. Um, but once we have that, we'll have a complete system in a case ready to go, kind of similar to what we used to have with the IC705. So some of you might be wondering, are we gonna have any 705 videos anymore? Probably not. So I've sold the IC705 and that entire kit, which included the IC705, all the cables, the solar panel, the bioeno battery. Uh, everything was packed up and sold on eBay. Um, it was a fairly expensive system, system to maintain and keep. Um, I have some work stuff going on this year and I won't be home very much, so I'm not able to use it as much as I would like to. So I figured I would sell that and buy something a little bit more affordable that I wouldn't feel as bad if it sat on the shelf a little bit. So that's why I settled on the X6100, which some of you guys might be wondering, how does it compare to the IC705? Well, let's put it bluntly, it's not the IC705. It's a nice, decent radio. Um, it does have that Zygu feel, and if you've had any Zygu radios, you'll know what I mean. Uh, the menus can be a little bit tricky, but overall, I would say it is the best Zygu radio that I've had. I've had um, some of the other ones. I had the X5105, which was a great radio for its price point and what it is. Um, however, the X6100 is a complete step up you can't even compare it to any of the old radios in my opinion it has a built-in tuner which is like the biggest plus in my opinion compared to the ic705 yeah the 705 had vhf and uhf but i never used it once on the 705 uh, it's not that hard for me to carry a vhf uhf handheld um, so getting the tuner and trading it for the vhf uhf in my opinion is a is a steal um so yeah, the X6100, I think kind of once you work through some of the bugs of just getting it set up and figuring out, there's not too much information out online about it. Obviously, there are a couple of YouTube channels that have put out some great information and are continuing to work with the X6100, um, but it's not, not, not a ton of information out there yet. So I'll actually be posting another video about how to set it up and configure the X6100 to work with WinLink and VAR, uh, VAR HF. So... That being said, let's go ahead and pack up and we'll do our short hike back to the vehicle. Um, actually, we'll go the longer way around. That way you guys get a little bit of hike in as well. So here's a little bit more uh, information and another look at that antenna from gigaparts so it's a um <clears throat> nfed half wave that like i said was about 55 dollars plus shipping off of gigaparts it comes in this plastic enclosure i don't think it's waterproof but there's only i guess a toroid inside of there so um shouldn't be too big of an issue you have your pl259 female connector here and then you have your wire uh, it's a lot of wire you know it's quite a bit of wire but really the size is not an issue like it fits fine into my case so if i go ahead and pack this up i'll show you for such an efficient antenna that you can tune up to so many different bands um i think this is a great steal uh compared to like the chameleon m pass 2.0 yeah it's probably going to be a faster setup with that because it's a whip configuration but this is going to perform and tune up so much better um and like i said all i need is just two of these bungee cords here that also fit into the box and I use those on both ends as insulators and easy mounting points for the antenna. So that all fits nicely into my box. Um, as you can see here, I also have room for where my battery is going to go, the bio and a battery. That way we can avoid situations like what happened today. Um, and then this Surface tablet doesn't stay in here all the time because I actually use it for other things. But I'll probably end up picking up another one that will live in this case. So all in all, this system, which is, I'd say, pretty comparable to the IC705 that we had that you guys saw in all those videos, um, this system compared to, to the IC705 one is probably a fifth of the price and, in my opinion, operates uh, just as well. So yeah, I'll, I'll give you more information on the hike and um, tell you kind of what our goals are and wh where we're going to go with this system. So.
so much cooler out here in the woods so it's memorial day 2022 we're about in central kentucky here and out on that hill with the sun setting out there in front of us it was uh probably 85 maybe 90 degrees uh, but out here in the woods heading back to the vehicle it's much cooler <clears throat> so i want to take a minute and just kind of talk about um the channel the radios and kind of what are, what my intentions are and what i can see happening in the future so a little bit of context and background um i got into amateur radio maybe two years ago three years ago uh really just got my my the license for vhf uhf then i worked my way up to the hf one um forgive me i don't remember the exact names i think it's like general uh or something like that <clears throat> so some of you guys might be surprised why i don't know like the names of some things or the technical uh, definition so i know enough to get by and take the test um however the reason i got into amateur radio wasn't to like chase contacts or something like that it was more to be able to use a functional tool so for me it's less about acquiring contacts or something like that it's about trying to build systems and utilize them in the environments that i would probably need to use them in uh, in order to have effective communications so <clears throat> that being said i think the very first hf radio i bought was i think it was like a icom uh not sure it was it was a older icom radio and I fell in love just got a cheap antenna off ebay set that set that sucker up and was just scanning the bands i think that was before i even had my general license so i was just scanning the bands listening and i was like okay i have to get this done so i got the license done uh upgraded to a slightly better radio i think my my first good hf radio was the kx2 and i loved that thing uh there was a period though where i kind of became less interested in radio and I decided to sell it. That was like the worst possible choice ever. Um, I think I ordered that right when COVID started. So I had to wait like half a year to get it anyways. And so I got it, kept it for a little while and got rid of it. <clears throat> really regret selling that radio. Well, that being said, there weren't as many options back then. Like I think the 705 came out after I already bought the KX2. And the X6100 definitely wasn't out back then. So... You know, yeah, I sold the KX2, but it kind of led me to buying other radios that I was able to kind of play with, experiment, try them out. So, went through the 705, as you guys know. You've seen some of those videos on the channel. Um, and now we have the X6100. So, my intentions are to kind of build out as many of these systems as I can practically afford. Um, so, maybe two or three of these cases with, I don't know, it might be the X6100, it might be some other radio maybe the X5105 and have a good antenna system, everything in the case so you can just grab it, um, utilize it yourself, give it to a family member, give it to somebody else where they can take it. It should be minimal instructions and setup required. They can set it up and we can have effective communications. So why, why amateur radio? Why settle on that for my communications choice? So Obviously, all of you guys that are like hardcore radio guys, uh, you, you understand the benefit of radio. For some of those that are new to radio, maybe don't understand. Essentially, what we have is we have a system completely independent of the traditional communications networks and systems. So we're not relying on cell towers or internet or any of these other traditional methods to communicate. Instead, we're using... Um, RF waves in the high frequency range and we're communicating that way so traditionally you would use like voice communications or phone communications where you speak through the device transmit your voice over the uh, RF waves and is received by another station however in the last I'd say maybe two three years um, new digital modes have kind of come out so yes there are the old uh, legacy Maybe you can call them that legacy uh, digital modes, such as FT8, and there's probably other ones out there. I'm not as familiar with them. Uh, that allowed short keyboard, like keyboard to keyboard text messages to be sent over the RF waves. Um, however, newer and newer software has come out and been developed. So you have things like JS8 Call, you have VARA HF, which we use for like WinLink, 
Uh, so essentially WinLink just sends email, you know, you can draft the email, post it to your outbox like you would with any other uh, email provider. And the only difference is instead of using the internet to send that, you're using the radio and the RF waves to send that. So there's even newer software that we haven't experimented with yet, but we will. So it's actually VARA, but it's called VAR AC. And that's a chat, um, chat provider essentially, or a chat platform built off of VARA. And VARA, in my, in my opinion, and based on my research, is probably the most efficient digital mode there is. Um, yeah, there have been some comments on my videos that, you know, if you're really trying to achieve efficiency and, you know, operate QRP and get your signal out there, then you should definitely learn CW. I don't disagree with you. However, the number of operators that know CW or Morse code is going down every day. Um, that's that's the unfortunate reality of it. Back in the day, it was a lot more common. Many people learned CW in the military. Uh, it's my understanding that the military no longer requires anybody to learn CW. So that's a skill that is slowly going away. Um, digital modes are much more efficient than phone or voice modes. So I'm running pretty much in all my videos, I'm running five watts, which is considered QRP or low power. And I'm typically running pretty compromised antennas. Um, today being an exception, that was a better antenna, probably the best antenna that I could run because it's a wire antenna, it tunes up well. Um, it's not a compromised length or anything like that. So it's a, it's a great antenna that's still portable enough for me to be able to uh, assemble and disassemble within a few minutes. Uh, the entire system fits into a school size backpack as you guys saw. It weighs, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 pounds, so it's not that heavy, and it's relatively affordable. Um, the X6100 plus the antenna and some of the accessories, like let's say the tablet, though you can use something else, it's all under $1,000, right? Um, <clears throat> you can substitute a cheaper laptop or tablet or something like that, and you'd be, you'd be fine as well. So, like I said, my intention is to have a couple of these systems uh, built up, packaged up, and ready to go uh, to use in all different kinds of situations. So one practical, legitimate situation is I go camping, off-roading, hiking. Um, I, I go out sometimes into areas where I have no cell service for like a day or two. So having the ability to pick up this case, throw it in my bag, and be able to communicate via email or voice in the case of an emergency or other digital modes is is essential to me so yeah that's one use case the others i mean we can look at situations like ukraine or maybe there's other natural disasters occurring in other places where there are no communications no reliable communications for for days for weeks for months even right and having the ability to <clears throat> communicate effectively in those types of situations is key. Um, you can do some research on your own. However, from my experience and knowledge, <clears throat> without communications, uh, you're good as dead. <laughs> you can be as prepared as you want in other, other ways, but that's only gonna last you a certain period of time before you need to communicate and coordinate with other, with other elements. So that being said, um, in the future, uh, you'll probably see more videos of me trialing this equipment in different environments. So I plan to do some, a couple trips, maybe off-roading, maybe some on the motorcycle, something like that. Um, just out there, pretty remote, setting up the equipment, figuring out what issues we have. You know, we ran into a problem today where <laughs> the battery was charged up enough for me to get out here and send out one message and then i received another message as well but i was trying to send a reply to the second one and the radio died so that indicates to me that you know leaving the radio on the shelf for a month or two <laughs> yeah it, you know it'll work it'll work for a short period of time but you know i probably need some kind of charging solution or an external battery or solar power to mitigate these type of issues um, <clears throat> i definitely want to get more into voice communication I understand I've been preaching digital modes for the last five minutes, uh, but I think it's important to be able to communicate effectively using voice also because not you might not always be able to uh, get out a computer or 
tablet or something that can run different software. Uh, sometimes you might need something quick where you can just set it up and speak into the into the machine and get your message out. <clears throat> so I actually called CQ for a few minutes today before I got WinLink fired up. Um, however, uh, we've encountered some issue where the RF output power on the X6100 for me, for some reason stays at zero or like 0 0.01 watts out. So I think that's probably like a software bug. Um, so I'll have to kind of dig into that and figure that out. It works fine like when I'm transmitting digital modes obviously because I'm making contacts and it shows like four or five watts output but <clears throat> on voice it just shows zero for some reason so I'll have to kind of dig into that um, but yeah so I appreciate all the support on the channel guys uh, yeah we're not huge we don't have a million followers but you know I'm not really after that I just want to put out information that is helpful to you guys and also entertaining so hope you guys enjoy the rest of this hike and hope you guys enjoy the video let me know what kind of content y'all want to see. I would appreciate it if you guys can subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. It helps. Um, I'm sure more people would be interested in this content if they knew it was out there. So, yeah, stay tuned. I'll catch you on the next one. a small brook that trickles out the hillside there it's pretty much flowing all year round it's not much but it actually turns into a pretty large creek down there that goes out to the Kentucky River it's a good resource to know where it's at brook running through here it really is like a jungle here um, in the early summer spring of Kentucky I mean you can see the amount of green here and just the vegetation is almost overwhelming in some of the spots back there you just have to kind of squeeze through it and this is a pretty highly trafficked trail here <clears throat> 